Hey, hey guys, hope you're doing well. Working this Milky Way Supra, Fantasy Supra for Mr. Kyle, and wanted to show you guys how I work these noses on these Xfinity Supras. So, it's not too complicated. I just focus on cutting out the headlights and the decal as best as I can. Um, as with most cars, you try to get the background color removed, especially around the headlights and the front nose, and that really simplifies things. It makes the finished product look that much better. But let me show you how I do the noses typically on these Supras. So, you can see how the Simpson and the Sunoco decal here overlaps with the grill just ever so slightly. So try and, normally I would try to separate that out, but it's touching there and so if I cut it, you know, it's not really going to do me any favors. So since it's overlapping on both sides, I'm just going to leave it as one large piece. So let's cut that first. And we're going to cut right along the top there. And you can see I've already kind of cut out a little bit of the excess that's around the Sunoco there on both sides. So that's where I'm at right there. And what I'm going to do, just ever so slightly, I'm just going to put a little cut right there. Not too much. Just a little cut so when I go to put that on place, it folds around it'll it'll aid a little bit so just a little tiny cut there see that all right so let's get that in the water all right so now I'm left with the headlights and the little Supra and Toyota logos so let's first I already kind of cut around the the Supra and the Toyota logo are um, are white so it's really hard to see. I'm going to end up keeping them together. You can separate them out if you want to. I've done that in the past but I'm going to keep these together because they're white. They're hard to see. I don't want to cut into the decal lettering or design so I'm just going to keep it together. So yeah. Okay. Now you got these weird little headlights that have like a little tear duct on the side. And so what I normally do is I again separate that over there um, with with this little tiny decal right there. I'm not even sure what that is. Normally it's like the letters of the organization, like a like if it was RCR or something um, that would go there. But I'm just going to leave that there as its own separate piece so I can put it right where I need to put it on the car and it's not tied to the headlight or anything else for that matter okay and then the other headlight we're gonna do the same thing there's a little uh, white 54 I mean super tiny just a super tiny 54 there wish it wasn't so small but sometimes you're working with what you're working with, right? So let's cut this across here, get rid of this excess. And separate that. And so my headlight decal looks like that. Put it on the left side there since the left decal and then we'll cut out this tiny little 54 here. There's a little overhang there. Get that in the water. As you can see, I already got the Milky Way and the 
54 on the roof there. Doesn't look too bad. But notice what happened here on the back. So every once in a while when you paint, it just doesn't come out perfect, right? Sometimes there's a little, I don't know, fuzzy in the paint or there's just like a little, I don't know, clump. And that's what happened here on the back. It was it, There was a clump there. And so I just scraped it off because I didn't want it. I wanted this to be as smooth as possible. And so when you go to put this piece on the back, right, it's going to cover that area and you're not even going to see it. So, so not a big deal. But just something to look for, you know, when you're painting. Um, unfortunately, you know, I didn't see it. Not a big deal. Um, but when you're painting, you want to you want to kind of check it to make sure that try not to have any imperfections there. But it's hard, guys. I mean, you know, you're I'm using a rattle can. Some people like to use airbrushes and 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 really go to town and do a you know do a bang up job on the paint. And, you know, all applause to those people that do that, um, that go to the nth degree and sanding in between coats and, and all that, even on these little cars. And so, um, yeah. And then, as you can tell, this is a little short. Going to have a little bit of black exposed on the bottom. So I can bring that up just a little bit. So I'm going to have a little bit of black exposed on the bottom. And, and even still the decal is not going to reach the top there by the spoiler. But again, it is what it is. I had the black background removed, not the green. If I had the green background removed, I could, you know, cut this out and lay everything in place. But since it's all one color, I can't really do that. So. The Supra decals are just a little bit off on the back. Like I said, they're, they're a little bit short and they're a little bit long. But they're long because these sides need to come around and the sides kind of come up a little bit short sometimes. So you kind of have to you kind of have to bring them around. If you cut them off, they may not uh, cover and you might have some black showing through. So here you get this wrap around effect and that fills in a little bit of the gap that's there. It's not perfect, but Again, you're working with what you got. Trying to make the best with what you got. Alright, let's try to get this Milky Way decal on the... On the hood here. It's sitting in the water long enough. Milky Way. Guys, I have to be honest. When I was a kid growing up, we would go like trick-or-treating. Ugh. Milky Ways were the best. They were my favorite, favorite candy bar. Ugh. Always loved Milky Ways. Since then, I've really come to like Reese's. Just the peanut butter and chocolate. But Milky Ways are still one of my favorites. And then, and then they came out with the Milky Way Dark. Oh my gosh, guys. Called the Milky Way Midnight. What an awesome. With the dark chocolate. Oh, jeez. 
Heaven on Earth. Milky Way Dark. Absolutely awesome. Love it. Absolutely love it. Alright, trying to just get all the water out of this decal from underneath the decal there, but trying to make sure it's relatively straight too. That looks so cool. So you can see this is the um, I did a lot of videos, little short videos on this making of this Ty Gibbs number 54 monster and um, finished it up today. Gonna try to, I think I started my little short, tried to do one minute videos of, of, of the progress of making a custom and I think I started with after I had painted it and I was starting to reassemble things so I'm gonna try to go back and 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 do um, uh, do from the very beginning of a of a black Supra just to try to complete a a playlist of you know like I said about one minute videos from start to finish so if somebody wanted just a kind of a cliff notes version they could watch that playlist and it might be I don't know you know 12 you know, 10 12 videos we'll see but again just just trying to trying to um, show you guys in different different ways different formats and you know the content of how how you make a custom but real happy with how this turned out um, this product no kidding is really really good and I really like it and I'm gonna continue to use it for my matte finishes I also saw that they make a satin finish on curious what that would be look like but regardless this is uh, this is how this guy turned out so again real happy with it I, it was interesting I was looking at the car um, and right before I started sealing it or as I, I think I put a couple coats of sealer on it then I saw the lower valence had this green stripe there and there I thought it was really weird never seen it like that before but it wasn't on the nose it was just on the side skirts so went ahead and put that in there with my with my lime green sharpie and yeah real happy with how this turned out definitely took my time <laughs> so it was a it was a long process So I'm also trying to do some finishing touches on uh, some of Kyle's cars. Uh, this is the uh, championship uh, car, and uh, I've got the um, decal on. I got the spoiler painted, and got it um, sealed up, lower valence green, and now I'm just kind of painting underneath here. gloss black testers so yeah the home ownership uh, saga continues um, I've got a utility sink down here and I'll just tell you this real quick but the utility sink feeds into a, uh, a sump because our our basement uh, drains um, are too low for the street for connecting with the sewer out in the street so we've got a basement sump that's for waste and sewage so my utility sink goes into that uh, sump 
and there's a pump in there, right? So when it reaches a certain height, it will, uh, it's called an ejector pump, and it will, boom, boom, you know, launch the, the waste up and out. Well, that ejector pump is um, about 16 years old, maybe even a little bit longer, and it has stopped working. So, I had some companies come over, give me estimates, and holy smokes, I think I'm just going to do it myself. Um, yeah, I, as much as I would like to just pay somebody to do it and have it done, I, I'm not in bit, I'm not in that. I don't have that kind of money playing around to do that kind of stuff. I'm just not interested either in paying it. There's a truck when I get this done here. So anyways, I can't use my utility sink until I get that pump. So I'm going to have to buy a pump, doing some research now. And um, and then once that pump comes in, I will have to open that sump up and replace it, put it in. So that should be interesting. I've never done that before. I can't think it's overly difficult. Maybe those of you that have messed around doing plumbing work and stuff in the past. Um, but I don't... Uh, I don't think it could be overly difficult. I really just have the utility sink put into it, so it's not like it's doing a bunch of waste. If we ever get this basement finished and I get the um, you know the bathroom down here done, I have a rough in for a bathroom. But yeah, I just have that utility sink going in there, so it's not that big of a deal. Maybe that's why the ejector pump has lasted so long. But yeah, so. I can't use my utility sink, so if, when I'm cleaning cars and stuff, I've got to take it upstairs and use the kitchen sink. And as you might imagine, that's not um, it's not ideal. My wife's not too excited about me scraping and using cleaning off the paint stripper and and the remaining wrap. Oops, um, in the kitchen sink. So yeah, so. The blessings of home ownership, guys. Not as glorious as it's all cracked up to be. Always seems to be something going on. Alright, so let's see if we can get this guy going here. Plenty, plenty of time in the water. Alright. Okay, so... As you might imagine, when you get this guy on, he wants to curl up. And you kind of have to tell him who's boss. Because as much as you want him to curl up, you kind of need to get him in his place. So what I like to do I'll hold this side See how that's like up like that A little bit's not too bad but let's See if I can hold that in place
try to get it centered, of course. Okay, that's not bad. So these super decals for the headlights are don't seem to be as big as they as the body is. So I just try to get it try to get it in this little in this little area here as straight as possible. Sorry if my I'm not focused. So Yeah, and I apologize, my battery is I don't know, I'm having some issues with my batteries again. They're not they're not allowing me to go as far as I used to usually would get like 29 minutes out of my battery and then and now it looks like it's shutting off earlier than it should so I may have an abrupt ending to this video but yeah so trying to get those aligned centered with one another Can be a challenge. Let's get this super in here. Okay. All right. And then you got these little guys. And again, you can put them wherever you want to. It's nice when they're separated out. And then the tiny, tiny little 54. And that's the nose on a Supra. Hopefully that's helpful to y'all. It's rare to do a Supra custom. So, we'll be getting these guys on here. And this, to complete this. And then I'll do that Midnight, Milky Way Midnight. And that'll be the last ones, Kyle, for you. I have all these other ones, all those other ones over there 
pretty much done for you. All right, let's close with a verse, a very encouraging verse. Come here. Isaiah. Isaiah 41.10. Fear not. Isaiah 41.10. What a great verse. Started May 17th, 1999, 24 years ago. Fear not, Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, will I, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. This world has a lot of difficulty in it, but we can rest on God's promise. And this is one that he spoke through the prophet Isaiah to the Israelites. Don't be afraid. Don't fear. God is with us. It's amazing how personal God can be. The one who created the universe spoke things into existence. Galaxies and universes and planets. But he is interested in us as human beings. So much so that he is with us. We don't have to be dismayed. We don't have to lose courage. He is our God. He will strengthen us. He will help us. He will uphold us with the right hand of his righteousness. What a wonderful, wonderful God that we have. We just need to trust him and trust his word. And I hope this is an encouragement to you all. All right, guys, God bless. And we will talk to you in the next video. Take care.